If you've come here to find out the best bang for buck build for Escape from Tarkov, you have come to the right place. I'll give you some quick general guidelines on what is the best overall mentality to approach building a PC for Tarkov with, along with, that's a great way to transition, Jesus, along with one of the builds that I made just as a demonstration for the best bang for buck build that you could get right now. With that out of the way, here are the tips that I'd recommend for building a PC for Tarkov as quick as possible. Firstly, you're going to want to build a PC spec around your CPU. Your CPU should be the thing that you want to spend as much money on as possible because spending more money on that CPU will ensure you get the highest frame rate on maps that require it, such as streets or lighthouse or reserve or maps of that nature that have a lot of complexity to them and a lot of AI. You are going to need that extra performance from that CPU in order to get higher frame rates from your GPU. Even if you get a mid-range GPU like a 6700 XT or a 3060 Ti, having that high end CPU will allow you to go to higher frame rates by lowering the visual quality of your settings. Whereas there's not many things to lower for your CPU if you got a higher GPU and then, you know, decided to buy a lower end CPU instead. Do keep in mind though that having more cores does not necessarily mean that you'll get more performance in Tarkov. If you get a 12 or 16 core processor from AMD, for instance, or an i9 processor from Intel, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get a ton more performance than an i5. Games simply cannot use all of those cores. So look at reviews and find a CPU that is the best bang for buck. Sometimes it won't be the highest end R9 or i9. It may be in the middle of the stack. You just need to find reviews that can tell you that. Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unbox, or other reviewers that are around can help you figure that out. Secondarily, if you've watched some of my other videos, you would have also noticed that Tarkov is especially RAM hungry. It is going to eat up a good bit of RAM, and especially if you're multitasking and have like Chrome and other things open in the background, you are going to want to have at least 32 gigabytes of RAM on your system. I wouldn't recommend going to 64, but 32 would be really solid for you to have as much extra space as you need for Tarkov to do its thing, along with having the space you need for other apps like Discord or Steam or Chrome. And finally, this is a personal biased opinion, so of course I may get some flack for this in the comments, but I personally like to build for upgradability in the future. You'll see in the part of the video coming up that I didn't spec any Intel CPUs. And the reason I didn't decide to pick any of them is because their current platform, LGA 1700, is a dead platform. It is not going to get any more CPUs past their most recent 14th generation. That, combined with their overall low value in comparison to AMD CPUs, especially the X3D variety, I simply cannot recommend them. However, if you know in your particular use case that you will have a mix of producti productivity wow, and gaming, then I'd recommend possibly looking into an Intel CPU. Their 12th gen CPU parts have been dropping dramatically in price recently, and that may be a way to get your foot in the door and get a lot of extra cores if you're doing productivity workloads. Those CPUs can still perform fairly well on Tarkov. And that sort of segues into my next point is that it's all dependent on your use case. So obviously the exact build that I made here may not really fit into what you are planning, and that's okay. This is just a general guide for you guys to see what I'm thinking as far as PC builds for Tarkov. But I believe that's everything, and now it's time for me to flashbang you and show you the PC part picker builds that I made. This first one is more budget, and I won't go through and explain every single pick that I made here, as for example, the case is just a filler case, and the power supply, of course, can be interchangeable depending on what you decide to pick. But overall, this sort of demonstrates the philosophy I was talking about with getting your higher end CPU in the platform. You may be thinking to yourself that a 7600 isn't necessarily that high end, and to an extent, you'd be right, but having roughly equivalent performance to a 5800X3D, along with getting on a newer platform that you'll be able to upgrade with in the future, is pretty valuable, and that's why I decided to spend that extra money on getting into the platform. That is also why I have an insanely expensive motherboard for the CPU there. That's as a little reminder to let you know that it is good to build for longevity's sake if you want to drop in upgrade in the future. That is half of what made the AM4 platform so successful was that it's, it had the ability to upgrade so many times throughout its lifespan. So do do some research on the motherboards that you have for your socket and see what will allow you to have an upgrade in the future, specifically with the VRM features in the motherboard. 
that's VRM because I can't speak. You just want to make sure that it has ample power delivery for those CPUs if you decide to upgrade to something more powerful in the future. The second really good thing about these AMD CPUs and why I do recommend them is because they don't need much to cool them. You'd see in, for instance, Pureology's videos right here that parts like the 7800X 3D and AM5 CPUs in general are very efficient while gaming, so they don't need much to cool them, which will help trim down your budget as well. I just went for this budget air cooler that is really performant in its class, and you could probably go to something similar if you just want a little extra. If you go with this specific CPU though, it will come with its own built-in cooler that you can just place on top of the CPU at no extra cost. I also followed my guidance of getting 32 gigabytes of RAM, and then I went with a video card that had ample amounts of VRAM. This specific card, the AMD RX 6800, is a very good buy right now for 370 bucks. According to PC Part Picker, this is one of the lowest prices it's ever been in its life, and it's honestly a very, very performant card for the price. Nvidia has a hard time getting to a similar price while still maintaining the same performance, and you should have no problems matching the 7600 in Tarkov. This build right here at just above a thousand dollars will allow you to get into the door with streets and have a good playable experience on all maps, at least right now so far. The goal of this video is to show you guys my overall philosophy when I'm looking at building PCs for people who are planning on playing Tarkov. I made something that was a bit higher end so you guys would see my philosophy even further. And simply put, this 7800X3D is just the best bang for buck chip right now. This absolutely slams Tarkov. You can get over 100 FPS on streets. It is a nuts chip. And the best thing about it is it also doesn't need much to cool it. I just went with a Liquid Freezer 2 here just because I like this liquid cooler and it'll also support more power hungry chips if you ever decide to get a more power hungry chip down the line. You could easily put an air cooler on this thing and still get comparable results on it. It is that good of a chip. Likewise, I kept the RAM at the same speeds, but just added a little extra flair in the Z5 G Skill Trident chips. Just because these, you can also like adjust the timings and get them a bit tighter. So if you want to do some of that personal fiddling with it, you can. And then, of course, because I know there's going to be somebody screaming about me not recommending an in, uh, NVIDIA card, I've got a 4070 12 gigabyte in here. The 4070 is probably one of the best value GPUs in NVIDIA's lineup right now. There is some rumors swirling around that there's going to be a refresh coming around the corner in January to February for this, along with the 4070 Ti and the 4080. However, this price right now at roughly 500 bucks is a fairly good place to be. If you can get a 4070 along with this CPU, you should have absolutely no problems running Tarkov at over 100 FPS on all maps. And also, you can't ignore the case. This is simply my case that I put in there as a placeholder to just say that you should get as many fans inside of it as possible. And of course, I want the same motherboard to prove another point that you can then upgrade further down the road with a more expensive motherboard, or at least one that has sufficient VRMs and VRM cooling. I won't get into everything as I want this video to be nice and short and concise for you guys to get my general ideas. But if you have any comments about anything specific I said in the video, feel free to leave them in here or on our Discord, and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you, or other people will be able to answer them as well. I didn't explain everything, and I know there's a lot more to PC building than just this, but I hope that this at least gives you a general sense of what you should be looking at and focusing on for your build. For example, I do not want you to say, go and stretch to a 4070 Ti or 4080, and then lower your CPU to something like a 5600. Doing that is probably the worst thing you can do. Please do not skimp out on the CPU for Tarkov. Go for the CPU first, get as good of a CPU as you can, and look up benchmarks for that CPU for Tarkov if they're available, and see if it's something you can afford. Just remember that more cores does not mean more performance for gaming. Look up the reviews for chips and make the best purchase based on their relevancy and their price. If you have a build that you want us to look at, make sure to leave it in our Discord as well. I'll be happy to take a look, but for now, that is the end of the video. I'll be streaming tomorrow at 7 p.m. CST. Feel free to jump in. And for now, like and subscribe. And this is Clem. Clocking out. Later.